checking out this video, don't forget, like and subscribe. Well, if we got news today... What was that noise? That was the uh, news alarm, apparently. Oh, is that right? We got a news alarm <laughs> yes, now? Yes, we got wow. breaking news. Is that like the Lenny counter? <laughs> the rumors of AEW running a stadium show in Texas have become a reality. As the promotion announced Thursday, they were bringing all in to the Lone Star State. Next year's all in will be Saturday, July 12th, Globe Life Field in Arlington. Where the Texas Rangers of Major League Baseball play. You remember that place? It's where they played this year's 2024 All-Star game that you checked out. Yeah, sure, of course. It will be the first pro wrestling show ever held in that venue. And it will be the first ever stadium show in the United States. Which is kind of weird because I thought that was Arthur Ashe. But that's what Tony claimed. Tony Khan claimed that. First ever stadium show in the U.S. Well, in a freestanding building, the Arthur Ashe Stadium. Arthur Ashe is literally called the Arthur Ashe Stadium. But That's it's literally inside, what it's called. It's inside the Arthur Ashe United States Tennis Club, where there's plenty of stadiums inside of a stadium. This is their first stadium it's that sits alone as a stadium. called the Arthur Ashe Stadium. So, no, it's not their first stadium show in the U.S. But regardless, regardless, all in... <laughs> All in this year is at Wembley. All in next year is in Arlington. And he claimed that all in 2026 would be back in London. But he didn't actually say Wembley. So it could be on a boat. A boat where Dave and I are doing our our Q&A next weekend. I presume that 2026 London means Wembley. But I guess we'll we'll find you sure? out. Could it mean Craven Cottage? We'll find out soon enough. So yeah. What do you think? Forty thousand people, roundabouts. I guess for baseball, fit in that stadium. You could fit more in theory if you wanted. You know, to use the entire Brother, grounds and everything. All I know is this. All I know is this. I look at the attendance of AEW shows of late, mm-hmm. and this seems like a terrible idea. It does. However, however. Clearly, what they are trying to do is brand All In as their WrestleMania. Yes, they are. You know? And I was talking about this with uh, Dave and and, uh, and some other people as well. So I'm, I'm watching that WWF Challenge in Primetime Wrestling, the Build to Mania 3. And, you know, we, we got to January. We got to the first week of January. We got to the second week of January. And I'm like, they haven't even announced this Silverdome show yet. It's the second week of January. And literally, like, the third week of January, Gorilla and Bobby are like, where's WrestleMania going to be? I don't know. I don't know where it's going to be. And then Bobby's like, I know where it's going to be. I got the scoop. Madison Square Garden. This is the third week of January. WrestleMania 3 was at the end of March, okay? So they finally make the announcement, like, the end of January, beginning of March... So they got like six weeks before WrestleMania 3, they sold 78,000 tickets. And, you know, Dave points out, well, you know, that's what they did back then. You know, they announced things, you know, they announce a year in advance like they do now. Uh, Same thing, you know, they're announcing this show a year in advance. And it was also pointed out to me that, you know, back then, this is the whole key. They didn't announce WrestleMania because they hadn't shot the angle for Hogan and Andre yet. Back then, you sold tickets on the main event. What's the main event? Well, once they knew the main event was Hogan and Andre, put the tickets on sale. Which reminds me, by the way, another story. When I was a little kid, I would go to the Seattle Center Coliseum. And back then, if you wanted to buy a ticket, you had to go to the box office. Or I guess you could probably call a number or whatever. But if you were at the show, there was no internet, there was no cell phones, there was nothing like that. So you'd be sitting watching the show in 1987, 1988, and they'd announce, you know, coming. we're going to be coming back in November... And uh, this is the top of the card. So I'll never forget, I was sitting there watching this show. I don't remember what it was. It's actually in 100 Things WWE Fans Should Know and Do, because I went back and found the show. But anyway, they announce during intermission, we're going to be back November 22nd at the Seattle Center. We're going to be back November 22nd 
at the Seattle Center Coliseum for a great night of WWF action. Scheduled for the show, Coco Beware, as well as the Warlord, Demolition, and in the main event, the Canadian Earthquake will be facing Hulk Hogan. I swear to God, they yelled the name Hulk Hogan. Dudes leaped out of their seats. Grown men and women leaped out of their seats. They start sprinting, sprinting to the box office to buy tickets for this show. I was like, oh my God. I was just, because I didn't like Hulk Hogan. But like these people sure did. But the point is, that's when you bought tickets. When you knew who was there, when you knew what the main event was, you bought your tickets. Well, now it ain't like that anymore. WrestleMania tickets are going to go on sale. The hell's the main event? We don't know. We can presume, but we don't know. It's sold on the name WrestleMania. And so clearly, the point of all of this frivolity is they want to brand all in as WrestleMania. They announce it a year in advance. Everybody buys their tickets. That's the one thing that, like, I think they figure every year we're going to sell 50000 to all in. Will they do it? I don't know, but they're going to try. Which brings me to what we talked about yesterday, the idea of AW running a stadium in Australia. So I have a buddy in Australia, and uh, this is not just some random person who is there. Uh, This person works in live events. This person works in... They're a big fan of of AEW. They follow WWE. And uh, this is what they had to say about this. And this is kind of long. They didn't want... They didn't want... uh, Work in management for a national TV and radio network, so they didn't want their name out there, obviously. But they said, while AEW airs on ESPN in Australia, it isn't the powerhouse channel that it is here in America. Since beginning on ESPN in February 2023, Dynamite, which is frequently preempted for live sports, has only charted in the top 20 on Foxtel once, June 8, 2023. It came in 20th with 20,000 viewers. It's typical for Thursday programming. is around 18, 19, 20 to draw 20,000 or so viewers. This indicates the usual number is below 20,000 viewers. This is your Australian viewership of AEW. There's an argument being made the majority of AW viewership in Australia is on Triller. Subscriber numbers are not readily available to a micro level, but when you consider that before it was broken up, WWE Network had 389,000 non-American subscribers. It would indicate that even WWE was not getting big numbers in Australia for their OTT services. Based on observer reporting of worldwide AW pay-per-view buys across all platforms, averaging 150, and Dave's breakdown of two-third in North America and one-third in the rest of the world, we can ascertain there are a couple of thousand of Australians going the extra step of their triller and paying for pay-per-views. You could reverse-engineer those into those just paying for the subscription to watch the TV programming. I would suggest it had come close to maybe 10,000. Outside of WWE, the history of touring wrestling isn't at the level of stadium shows. Global Warning in 2002 drew 50,000 in a 55,000-seat stadium. It's the first time in 20 years with Rock and Hogan advertised. Super Showdown drew a legit 62,000 in a 105,000-seat stadium. Elimination Chamber drew a shoot 47,000 in a 65,000-seat stadium. Annual WWE Tours draw between nine and 12,000. NXT drew 5,000 in Melbourne. New Japan with Cody, the Bucks, Omega and Okada drew 1,000 in Sydney and Melbourne. Hogan's first-time tour here drew 3,500 in a 15,000-seat arena. Bret Hart's show at StarCast drew 1,400. So uh, he's quite skeptical, and he's got more after the break. Observer Live. So one other quick thing here. He says Wembley is being used as a comparison in that there were doubters there, and this is just the same thing. People will fly in. Western Europe, however, is a one-hour flight away from London. Our nearest major neighbors are in Asia, eight hours away. They don't fly in en masse for WWE, and they won't for AEW, not to mention that just the U.K. itself has three times the population of Australia. Also worth noting, WWE has an Australian office, street presence, elite PR, active social media, decades' worth of brand building. I don't see AEW with minimal brand cash. No PR presence and low-rated programming doing 40,000 or whatever. 
And he makes it clear he's a big fan of AEW. He just doesn't think that you're going to do huge numbers running a stadium show in uh, in Australia at this point. And it's tough because, dude, next week uh, they're in Cardiff, right? Yeah. The week after, they're in uh, the Chicago market, Champaign, Illinois. 1,000 tickets sold. 1,005, according to WrestleTix. And the building is set up for 1,800 for Dynamite. The Dynamite after All In and just prior to All Out. So they're having a rough time selling tickets, dude. I, I wish them all the best, but I don't know, man. It's tough. I know, I know. And look, it's not, to rewind it all the way back, WrestleMania 30 was more the norm, but it's not like they didn't hype shows months in advance. If you go back and watch Crockett right now from 1984 while it's still up on the WWE Network, they're hyping up Starcade. So it did happen, although you're exactly right. The main event sold the tickets. And at house shows, I remember we used to time right before intermission, we would find out, okay, what was going to be the match, and we'd bail on that match and then go be near the box office because that was the way you got the best tickets at the time. It was a mad dash for those, and then, you know, you would call on the phone or however else you would get them down the line. I think they get 40,000 people in Dallas. I don't, I'm not going to say I don't think they have a problem doing that. But I think at least for this time, they do do it because it is going to be their biggest show. It will be hyped like WrestleMania. If that can't galvanize the traveling AEW fan base and galvanize them that the big show that has been in Wembley for the last two years is coming to America, hey, you know, then nothing will. So hopefully for their sake, they're able to do that. When it comes to Australia, I I don't get it. And I didn't get it before what you just said there. And after you said it, I understand it even less. I don't know why they're doing that. And this is another thing to a side piece to this that is more for Brandon Thurston to talk about on WrestleNomics. But they did that residency in Arlington, Texas, and it's not like they weren't doing it for a reason. And they have two years of Wembley and two years of that show to sell and to put their best foot forward on selling the city of Dallas and the city of Arlington as to why they should get tax breaks and all the breaks in the world for running this show. So what I can also see is much like WrestleMania that has basically turned its head, even though it's tried to do things to hurt WrestleCon and to hurt the GCW weekends, as time has gone on, they've started to embrace that because it's become something that they can sell to the cities that, yeah, we're going to fill up all your hotel rooms because it's not just us. We're going to get all of these other people in here, too, that are going to drive dollars. And that's obviously, or at least to me, that seems to be what AEW wants to start doing here. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.